everyone. This is Sue Reynolds with the Student Achievement Institute, and we're meeting with steering team members to talk about the preparation for your third uh, school counseling council meeting, where we will be, uh, your council will be discussing your program goals. So um, we're, uh, of course, thrilled to have you with Redesigning School Counseling, and we're kind of eager to move on to the next step, which is the, the goal setting step. So um, we'll begin this webinar with just some a uh, little bit of review. Um, then we'll look at some odds and ends. And then finally, the, the main focus of this, this webinar is to really help you prepare for uh, facilitating your third council meeting. So just a little review. Um, remember that, um, oh, one thing let me um, explain to you. On some of these slides today, you're going to see uh, GAK, Guiding All Kids, instead of RSC. Um, this is another initiative of ours in the steps um, the, the process for the goal step is exactly the same between guiding all kids and redesigning school counseling. We were scrambling to get all of the GACs changed to RSCs before this webinar, but we ran out of time. So as soon as the webinar is over, we'll, we'll change all of these, um, all of the slides that you see that say uh, GAK, they'll begin to say RSC. So, okay, so just, just know that when you download things tomorrow, um, everything will be switched to an RSC. Okay, so um, so in terms of the impact of RSC, um, remember that our thinking is that when we're designing a program, we're going to start with the dream, and that's what you did with your council at your last meeting. You really looked at um, what is what was the uh, dream um, for student achievement, what was your dream for ideal student practices, ideal adult practices, and then we also looked at what's the core convictions upon which all of your dream was based. Um, so, um, so we start out with the, with the vision, with the dream, and then in this very next step this month, we're going to ask the council, okay, for our dream to come true, for our kids to be um, well adjusted and do not have any social emotional issues and for them to do well at school and to um, have the achievement that we want them to have if, if we want those things to come true then what choices do students need to make in order to make those things come true for example let's say that you vision that all of your uh, students would complete a FAFSA that's the choice that, or that's the dream that you that that you have that in, as part of your uh, dream for kids. So then the question is, what choices do kids need to make? They need to choose to um, to obtain a FAFSA. They need to choose to fill it out. So so there's student choices in there that are going to impact your ability to move towards that vision, that dream that you defined last month. So. This month we're talking about those student choices, and those are actually your program goals. It's the goal of your program to help students make good choices. And then in future months, we're going to say, okay, then what do we need to do as counselors um, and as others in our community to help kids make those choices? What guidance do they need um, so that they can learn the knowledge they need to, uh, to make those choices? And, um, and then what counseling do they need to overcome social, emotional issues that are getting in their way? So, okay. So um, we also said in RSC that there's a lot of different ways to uh, help students make these choices. But the one that we're focusing on in redesigning school counseling is the school counseling program. Later, you may decide that you want to branch out and also put in a teacher advisor program or community-based guidance or a parent advisor program or, or integrate your guidance curriculum into the academic curriculum. But in RSC, we're focusing on the school counseling program. Okay, so um, if you're um, actually, this is a leftover slide, I will take this one out. This does not apply to you. This one applies to you. So this year, we're going through these six foundational steps. You've done the first two already. You've, you've um, written your benefit statement, and you've written your vision. And you'll see today why this vision is so important, because everything we do is going to be focused now on making this vision um, come true, moving us closer to the vision. We're probably, it's, your vision is probably so lofty, we'll never get there, but we'll keep moving closer and closer and closer each year. 
Okay, so this month we're going to talk about um, your goals or the choices that we want kids to make. Then next month we'll look at expanding your resources, especially the resource of time. Next month we'll bring back um, all of your um, uh, time use data and we'll really look at how you're spending your time and we'll talk about how with your council how can you get more time or how can they help you um, because of the, the limited time that you have. Then once we can um, uh, expand our resources, then we're going to come back to this list of goals, which is going to be a, a long list. And we're going to say to everyone, okay, we can't do it all at once. Let's now tease off some priority goals. And your school may only have one, two, or three priority goals. It'll be a very small number. You may have 70 goals, 70 different choices that you want kids to make. But in each year, as priority goals, you'll tackle a very small number. And the reason that number has to be small is because you want every single student, without exception, to make that choice. And so the programming that goes behind that choice has to be kind of intense. And you're really not going to have um, enough time, if you're doing this well, to, um, to really tackle more than just a handful of, of priority goals. Once we have those priority goals in place, um, we'll um, collect some uh, baseline data for them. And then we'll start looking at, okay, for those, the few areas that we're really focusing on, what's getting in the way? Why aren't kids making those choices? You know, why aren't they completing a FAFSA? Why aren't they reporting bullying? You know, why aren't the th they doing the things that we want them to do? Those are the root causes. They explain why kids aren't making those choices. And then once we know why the kids aren't making their root choices, then we'll come down and we'll start to design activities. Now our activities are focused. They're not just random activities that we're doing because we thought they were fun or we had a hunch that they might be connected in some way to some goals that we maybe have in our heads. Um, but now our activities are directly related to the root causes. The root causes are directly related to the priority goals. And if we achieve those priority goals, we should see ourselves moving closer to this vision. Okay, so that's kind of how it all fits together. And now just a couple of odds and ends. Um, we wanted to let you know that um, a lot of you have been posting to Instagram, which is really cool. Um, it really helps our staff to feel like we're at your school and it's, I get so, ex I really do get so excited um, when I see your photos and I see how you're using the materials and I can envision the, you know, the discussions that you're having. It's just kind of awesome. Um, we had a request from several schools to also do this with Twitter. So you'll notice um, in the process page now that you have a choice of either uploading a photo to Instagram or to Twitter. And just to show you kind of a couple that I kind of got excited about, um, one was from Schumacher um, that, you know, you can see how engaged their folks are um, as they're going through their visioning um, uh, activity. And um, yeah, and you know, their comment, lots of collaboration and another success, you know, woohoo, that's just so cool. Um, and then Seymour, um, you can see, you know, that they've um, looked at, um, you know, they've had that discussion with their council uh, about benefits and perspectives from the, the first council meeting. Um, so yeah, now they've got that up and we can kind of see what's happening with them as well. So, you know, you, you guys, you upload um, documents to the online system where we can see like the paper, the narrative. Um, but when you put those pictures up, it just all comes to life for us. Um, and also I think it'd be fun for you to go in and do that search under, you know, redesigning school counseling and, and see what everybody's doing. Um, um, and remember, Guiding All Kids is doing the same thing. So you could also search for um, hashtag Guiding All Kids and see other schools. Um, there's 31 schools all together going through Guiding All Kids. And so you can kind of see what they're doing as well. OK, um, another thing, just a kind of an uh, uh, update um, that we wanted to give you, um, just to kind of a heads up. This is nothing new. I just want to make sure that everybody's understanding it. Some of you have started looking at your counselor time use reports. And um, what we wanted to point out to you is that these reports are in beta phase. They'll be in beta phase for about another month. And what we're hoping is that those of you who have um, been logging your time, 
Um, we'd really love it if you'd go in and look at these um, summary time use reports and just see if they make sense. Um, we have alpha test tested um, like crazy and we've had a few schools that have um, beta tested and have given us, given us some heads up with data that didn't quite look right and um, in one case they were they were right we had a, a faulty formula in there and in another case um, uh, in other cases you know it was it was on their end on the user end so we could explain you know what what how they needed to be thinking so um, when you go in to look at this report if you'd like to beta test for us we, we would just appreciate that so much when you go in we've explained here how we've done the calculations so if you're a data geek um, you know you can go in here and you can kind of see how we came up with these percentages and then we've also um, given definitions about if you're logging your time properly these are the kinds of things that you'd put in each of the five delivery methods or i'm sorry four delivery methods for four um, activity types and then non-program and then these other definitions for other things like if you log something as paid time off or what does it mean if you log something as free um, and what does it mean if you've logged something as blank so there's no code in it um, so um, yeah and then um, so and then improperly log time would be um, when you're in the building but you just failed to log and you can't remember what you did um, and then if something's blank during contract hours when you're there and you just left the log blank um, that that's you know problematic so um, this is actually a real school's data obviously it's a large high school there's um, uh, nine counselors in the building um, but you can kind of see um, you know what they were doing in terms of their completion rate um, you know how many blank hours they had and then how their percentages turned out and you know everybody in their building thinks that they have all full-time counselors but you can see most of their counselors are four-fifths or 80 percent of their time is, is spent um, spent doing school counseling so so yeah um, this too remember when we come not to this next meeting but the next one after that we'll be using all this data so we want to make sure that you know we've worked out any bugs I we don't think there are any bugs left but if you want to look at this kind of as a beta tester for us that would be wonderful and then just call um, uh, Janet or Debbie um, if you find the issues and then they'll get you with me or with somebody else on our staff and um, and or they'll they'll take your information themselves and relate on to us so okay that sounds good okay now let me stop before we get into preparing for your third meeting just to see if there's any questions so far so if so let's type those in no questions so far okay. and, and before we go on to just I, I, I wish I had put in a, a survey question here and I didn't do it but I'm really interested in hearing those of you who had a vision um, your second meeting already um, if does any would you please somebody volunteer to share that with us and you can just raise your hand and we'll unmute you or I might just randomly pick on some people so um, anybody please 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 just one of you at least kind of share how that visioning meeting went I'm looking for a hand up I'm going to start picking on people somebody save someone else from being picked on somebody volunteer okay i'm picking on um christy vance christy's going oh no she's picking on me so christy i just unmuted you so we can all hear you um have you had meeting two yet yeah we did however we right before the vision worksheet i forget what it is but it's one with all the different stakeholders at the top um, right before we got to that, we had to end, like our meeting was just going really long. So we actually need to pick up on the, the vision part. I'm trying to figure out what the activity was right before that. It was, oh, core conviction. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So long on core conviction. It was really interesting. People had a lot to say. And I, you know, I anticipated it would, that one part would go pretty quickly because um, we're kind of revising stuff since we're a renewal school. Um, yeah. 
but it didn't go quickly. So <laughs> we had some good conversations, but we did have to sort of table vision until our next meeting. Okay, um, and, and remind everybody what school you're from and where you're located. I'm at Perry Meridian Sixth Grade Academy on the south side of Indianapolis. Okay, so um, it, is there something you would have we would do differently if you were doing it again or would you just plan to do two meetings do you think what advice do you have pe for people who haven't done this yet hmm. you know i think i'm not sure without really looking what it, what i would do differently um i think i just kind of anticipated wrong i thought we could kind of merge some new ideas with our old ones and then they would match up a lot but our new team had some new ideas that my prior advisory council had not come up with. So I don't, I mean, maybe just assume to do a whole new process and like instead of going into it with um, the idea of, oh, we probably won't need that much time since we're just sort of revising what we already have, yeah. you know, kind of go into it like pretending there's a blank slate so that the current advisory council gets their full, um, I don't know, you know, they probably took longer than my original advisory council took to, to, mm -hmm. to do it in the first place. But you know, just not assuming that because of renewal, it would take less time. So I don't know if there are other renewal schools out there that have a similar situation, but um, so, I think so first, moving forward, I probably won't assume we just need a little bit of time on those things just because we're revising. Yeah, that that's really interesting. It's good feedback for us, for, for Debbie and, and uh, for me as well. Um, so the when you did this as a brand new school, um, as a first year school, when you, I mean, I know that was like three years ago, but did, um, do you remember back having to rush through that then as well, or did it go okay the first time? No, I don't remember. I feel like we stayed pretty much on track with, you know, what was expected each meeting um, before okay. I didn't have to like table things. So I think that, no, yeah, I think it was just our situation this year. Okay. And how did your council feel about not completing the whole agenda? Were they okay with that because they realized how engaged they were in the core convictions discussion? They were okay with it because they were ready to go. Like we had done a lot of talking, a lot of thinking. I think people were exhausted. So, <laughs> okay. yeah. um, they were really great conversations, but we were just coming up close on the end of our time. And I wanted to honor that. Yeah, um, sure. They appreciated that. Good. Um, and I know we'll make it work, you know, somehow, somewhere. I'm not really sure what that's going to look like yet. Um, but, um, and we don't like, I, our agendas aren't always as long as the two hour time slot. Mm -hmm. So next one might just be closer to the two hour time slot. We're usually around like an hour and a half or okay. so. So maybe the next one we'll have to do the full two hours. Yeah. Um, you know, Chris, Christy, the, I mean, the good news is how engaged your council was. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of bad that that you didn't get everything done and you're gonna to have to somehow reconvene. Um, but man, oh man, you must have had a great discussion. Yeah, it was it was good. I think when, when we start getting to the activities and things like that, I think a lot of the points that they brought up are gonna kind of transfer there as far as, they had a lot of policy concerns and things like that that are even outside of building level control. Uh, so it was just good to have like, you know, our admin support there, district admin and school board representation because they need to hear those things yeah. um, so we can advocate for some of those things and I'm sure that will come up down the road. Good. So if, if, if others of you, if you have situations like that, it's, you know, it's perfectly okay to do what Christy did and um, is, you know, it, you just kind of have to, is, to judge, is this discussion so rich that it would be a shame to cut it off just for the sake of moving forward? And there's there's things that Christy can do now. Like one of the things you might do, Christy, is is do this as an email discussion or as a Google Doc discussion, um, where you put up the prompt, and then just everybody ask everybody to go into that Google Doc, um, you know, put it up as a shared document, and just have everybody go in and and jot you know brainstorm on that list um, from home. So yeah, because it's sounds like you kind of got everything set up for that discussion in terms of getting the core convictions done and, and now it's just a, a matter of you know looking forward so yeah good 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 i'm glad i picked on you christy <laughs> that was great that was what we spent that time focusing on i was going to raise my hands and save everybody anyways but 
<laughs> okay. Anybody else who's had that that vision meeting that would like to just share some thoughts? And Christy, I just muted you again. Anybody else? Let me see if I see any hands. No hands. No com any comments coming in, Debbie? No comments. Okay. I have a shy group today. So okay. Well that's that's great. And um I love that visioning discussion and that vision that you end up with is what we're moving towards. So this is really not about Gold Star or Ramp or Department of Ed or or our organization or you know your principal. It's about the dreams of your council and where as a community you want to go. So okay. So now let's talk about um, going from the dream stage into um, the goal stage, which is in all of the goals, remember, are going to be about student choices. What do we want students to do um, in order to move your, your, your community closer to that dream? So the first thing we're going to do is um, send out a pre-meeting memo to um, all of your um, schools, or I'm sorry, all of your council members. And that pre-meeting memo is going to have a link in it to the student choice data from your survey. So you guys have all been madly surveying and now we're going to, um, we're going to use the results of that survey. Some of them, um, others, other parts of the survey we'll use later. So we're just using the student choice questions off the survey in, in this month's uh, meeting. So um, let me show you what the memo looks like. And basically it looks like this. So we're saying, you know, to everyone, we're so pleased with our progress. At next meeting, we'll talk um, about the choices that all students make. And then we're explaining that um, these choices are going to be the, the choices that we target as being the choices that we want kids to make, those will become our program goals. And then in order to prepare for our next, and this will say RSC, for our next RSC meeting, please do the following. So um, please review the vision statement because we want them to have, you know, that always at the front of their thinking is we're, this is why we're doing this. You know, it's not just because this is fun or because, you know, the kids like it. It's, it's, it's because we're moving towards this vision and specifically the achievement data dreams that are in your vision. Okay, so we've got that vision, that dream out in front of them. And now we're going to say that our RC goals will focus on helping students make sound choices in areas that will move us towards that vision. So we want them to review um, the data report and they'll click here and I'll show you, let me go ahead and um, do that, control click. Oops, I think that's because I copied that. Um, oh, I know that's because I copied it. Okay, let me do it this way. But that'll be hot on there. It's just because I, I think I did this actually as a, a photo. Um, so it's not hot. Uh, so I'm going to go into show you what they'll see. So they'll get into, so it's rsc-public-data after our web address. They'll go in and see a report that looks like this and then the instructions tell them to uh, pick the most recent year. So you guys gave the 2018 survey, pick the state and then pick the, um, pick the um, uh, school. And I think um, I'm just gonna go in and Pick which goal do I want to be. Um, let's just use primary. And I should check it and make sure that. Let me go back to Christy. Um, Christy, have you guys surveyed yet? Most of our teachers should have Friday. Okay. I haven't checked anybody's survey. Okay, but you think they have today? They should have, yeah. Okay, okay, great. And I'm just showing your public data. I'm not going to show any of your, your private data. Okay. Okay. So um, so we've got Peer Meridian, and then we're telling them to choose the grade level drill down report for student plans and choices. So they'll click on that, 
and you can see this is starting to go around. Um, it usually takes a lot longer than that to pull the data up. So I did one this afternoon where I think it took four minutes to get the data. It just depends on, on um, how many little data points are in there. But here's what the data looks like. So, you know, do you plan to go to college? Um, what do you plan to do during the first year after high school? We're only seeing one grade level in here because um, this is only, we're only asking that um, of grade six. Um, and yeah, so let me check real quickly. Christy, what grades do you have in your school? Sixth grade, sixth grade only done. Done. Yeah, sixth grade academy. Yeah, okay. I just dawned on me as I was asking the question. Okay. So so that's why we're only seeing grade six. In your other buildings, you would see a column for grade six, grade seven, grade eight, if you're in middle school, et cetera. So it's kind of interesting to look at the data um, compared to each other, compared to different years. Okay, so then what we're asking your council members to do before they come to your meeting is to print the report and then put a check next to the choices that you believe all students should make in order for your school to reach their, their vision and their achievement goals. And then they're going to put a star next to any choices that they're concerned about because too few students in your building are making that choice. So if I go back to the Sixth Grade Academy's data, they might say, do we think it's important that all of our kids use, to, use the internet to learn about a career this school year? Um, they might say, yeah, we think that's important. So they'll check it. And then they'll, then they'll start to look at the data. You know, are we concerned then? If we think it's important, are we concerned that only 46% are saying that they did that? So if they're concerned about it, then they would put a little asterisk in there as well. We're going to use the checks at this meeting with your council. The asterisk we'll use at the following meeting. But just to save them time so they don't have to read the whole report twice, we're just going to have them do both steps all at once. So they're going to check things that they think are important for kids to choose to do in your building. And then they're going to put an asterisk on any data that they find is disturbing. So um, like, you know, keeping a daily list of your class assignments, do we think that's important? Um, yes, we check it. Oh gosh, 38% are, are doing that right now. Um, I'm concerned about that. So then they put a star next to it. There might be other data. Did you usually participate in class this year? 90% of the kids said that they were. So in, in that situation, they you know may, might not star it, um, but they might think it's important for the kids to choose to participate, so they would check it. Okay, so that's what they're doing. And then, um, then the instructions tell them to go to a different report. These are the reports that I personally just love to look at. Um, and these are the um, student group um, data uh, drill down reports. So what we're asking them to do is again to go back to this um, to this website where they can see the data. But this time we're going to ask them to um, drill down to just one of the reports that interests them. So I'm going to go back into that report and go back to where the reports are all listed. And, um, and here I can drill down and I'm just going to do a drill down by let's do the lunch program status. So are kids free to reduce lunch or not? So I'm going to click on that and the report will come up in a minute. And you can see now we're, we're pulling up more data. So it's going to take a, just a little bit longer. Hopefully not too, hopefully, there we go. Hopefully not too long. And so now I can look and see, um, you know, I can look at this. Um, let me see if, I'm looking to see if there's discrepancies anywhere. Um, and I'm not seeing discrepancies. And I actually am seeing a lot of reports where, oh, there is no data. Because, it, yeah, because when you look at this, this is answered only by students in grade 12. So I'm going to go down until I see, here we go. Um, I think I'm done. I'm sure it is user error. Oh, I, here's, now, if this ever happens to you, always check. Somehow I flip back to demo school. 
um, my computer, because I'm working on all different kinds of schools all at once, it saved some cookies and that's flipped me back to demo school. But you can kind of see um, what, you know, what that would look like. Um, demo school, um, yeah, has 12th grade in it, so we're getting all the 12th grade questions and demo school doesn't have any real students, so we're not getting student data. But, um, but you can see how, how that works. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure why. Oh, I know why. Um, because I didn't, I didn't hit the school. Let me see if I can do this. Let's get that drill down more again. There we go. There we go. So I tell you what, it's been a long day. Lunch program status. I didn't put the school in. Uh, okay, I'm going to Perry Meridian, sixth grade academy. Now I'm going to lunch program status. See, I've just demonstrated for you all the things not to do. <laughs> okay, there we go. So now, do you plan to go to college? You know, and I look at this and I see 82% of the paid lunch, 71% of the free and reduced. So you know, 11 point gap there. Um, what do you plan to do the first year after? Um, high school, this breaks it out, and so you can see that more of the free and reduced lunch kids are planning to go to a technical school than um, than the, the paid lunch kids. Um, one thing I really like about this question is I always think it's really interesting to see what percentage of the students aren't sure what their plans are right now for um, for after high school. Um, yeah, so you can, you know, I just kind of look down um, and see where I see some, you know, some gaps. Um, and then I see what, what the question was. So here's, you know, this one, there's not much of a gap. Did you use the internet to learn about a college? Here's kind of a larger gap, 16 point gap. Do you have someone you, that you feel comfortable uh, going to with your question about questions about college? You know, only 64% um, answer that as yes, and which kind of makes sense to me. But then as a counselor, I'm thinking, okay, are they gonna get that then from me at school if maybe they're not getting it at home or, or whatever? Um, so yeah, so you get, I just think the, the data is fascinating. So when your council looks at this data, um, some of them will, you know, think, oh, I want to look at the, you know, I'm really an advocate for low income families and I want to look at lunch um, program status. Somebody else may be a Hispanic parent and they may want to look at what the Hispanic kids are, you know, are what choices they're making compared to their peers. Um, you know, someone may be interested, like my favorite data to look at is the typical grades on report cards and see what kind of discrepancies. Oops, I forgot to put school in again. Perry Meridian, because there's really some huge discrepancies usually that come up with in there that I think are just kind of interesting. So that'll take a minute to load. But at any rate, so you can kind of see what they're doing. And everybody, each council member will probably select a different drill, drill down report. Um, you know, but if we look at this, I'm trying to look, see if we see any huge gaps that are just jumping out. Um, were you sent to the office? 9% um, of the kids get A's and B's. 35% of the kids get C's and D's. And we didn't have enough to report the, the DF data. So some gaps there. Um, a little bit of a gap with, did you save money for college? Um, uh, have you enrolled in the college savings plan? So yeah, I think, and especially the, the student engagement questions, let me see if I can find some of those real quickly. Um, um, did you participate in tutoring outside of the classroom? You know, we'd hope that the C's and D's uh, would be higher than the, the kids who were getting better grades. And actually, this is we usually see a bigger gap here, so that's that's kind of nice. Um, so so yeah, so the data I think is fascinating, and each of your council members will pick one of those drill down reports. Okay, so now they've done their homework. They're going to bring their printout with all their checks and their asterisks all over it, and then that that second part of the letter. Let me pull that back up. The second part of the letter um, asks them to identify, make a note of student groups who are making sound choices at a lower rate than their peers. So in this case, if I were looking at that data, I'd probably say, yeah, the free and reduced lunch kids are making sound choices in some areas at a lower rate than their peers. And um, 
and then record data to back up their beliefs. And for some of the reports, that may not always be the case. Like if you're comparing boys and girls, um, you may not find any differences. Um, so, you know, it just depends on, on your student body and the opportunities that, that, your, that your kids have. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the meeting. Let's walk through that. So these are the slides that go with um, the meeting. And this is actually not a real hard um, uh, meeting to facilitate. So let's just kind of fly through these. Um, and I actually think it's kind of a fun meeting. Um, I, I always enjoy facilitating this one. Okay, so we're welcoming people to your council meeting. We're going through the agenda and again all this will say RSC when you download it. So we're reviewing, um, we're doing a review, we're talking about um, we're explaining that today we're going to talk about our program goals and then we're also going to identify any guidance gaps that may exist that we know be between different student groups. So we're starting out with the review, kind of what we just did. Um, and then, of course, all of this will say RC. Um, then on these next slides, we want to review, remind your council about what was in your vision statement because we want that to be right in, right in their memory. So you could either hand them a copy of your vision statement or you could use and then just kind of skim through it um, or you could use these slides to say you know here's some highlights from our vision statement. We believe that all students deserve you know these things. We believe that ideal adults have these practices and ideal students have these practices and here's our ideal student achievement data. Okay, so we're refreshing their memories on the vision. Then we're going back and saying, okay, we've got our benefits done, we have our vision done. Now we're going to talk about goals or what choices do we want students to make. So we're talking about our RSC goals. So um, the key question in this discussion is what choices do we want all students to make in order for our school to move to, um, towards its vision? With the key word there in all, it's not, you know, it's not just all but this handful of free and reduced lunch kids. There's not just all but the Hispanic kids. It's every student in the building. So we need to teach your council um, how we're going to write goals. So basically, when we're writing goals, we're saying it's out. They are saying it's our goal is to increase the percentage of, and then we're going to say who we're going to impact. So the, in the first example, we're going to increase the percentage of all students who and then whatever the choice is, report bullying when it's observed. We're going to increase the percentage of all students who choose to follow school rules and therefore have no, no uh, discipline referrals. We're going to choose to increase the percentage of students who take a career interest inventory. So you can imagine, you know, we're kind of thinking about what do all of the things that, um, that you know, what are all the choices that successful kids tend to make? And we're going to get those all down. Um, okay, so then I do want to show you that it doesn't have to be all students. You may decide we also want our students to write a high school course plan, but it's not all kids. It's our eighth graders that we're, where we want that to happen. So we want all of our eighth graders to write a high school course plan. And then I also want to show you this last example. Let's say one of your goals is that you want all students, you want to increase the percentage of all students who turn their homework in on time. But um, you, as you look at the data, you notice that there's a discrepancy between boys and girls. So what this is telling me is that we want all kids, uh, overall we want more kids to turn in their homework. But we're trying to close a guidance gap here. We're in, improving the percentage of all students, but we're going to improve the percentage of boys faster because we're going to get them caught up. So we want to look at baseline data for both. If this ends up being a priority goal, we want to look at baseline data for both all students and then specifically for boys on that on that one choice. OK, so that's how we report. Um, that's how we write goals. And let me pause real quickly here and see if there's any questions about that. This, this is pretty key. Any questions, type them in real fast. Debbie, anything pop up? No, I see, I see no, questions. no questions. Okay, okay, so now we know how we're going to express goals. 
So and then we're reminding people again where this all fits together, that these, these student choices are these goals, the what we're defining right now at, our, at this council meeting is this step. It's the step between what we're going to do and our dream. These are realistic goals. Not you remember the dream was lofty vision pie in the sky. This is real stuff. This these are choices that we want students to make as we move toward that dream. Okay. So step one is to have people do an individual reflection. So it may, it may have been several days or a week since they looked at that data report. Um, and so we're give, just giving them some time to get out their homework that they brought with them and to just kind of look through it and really make a note of which choices did they not select. Um, what most people do with those choices is, you know, we, in that survey, we've, we've asked kids about choices that we think they should make. And so for most people, they're, you know, they think kids should make all those choices. But once in a while, someone will say, you know, that really doesn't apply to our kids. Or I would word this one differently. I wouldn't say it like that. So we want to know what choices out of that list, what choices did they not select? And then we also want them to think about, were there any choices that you didn't see on that list that you want to add, that you think that our students also need to choose to and that may be something that 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 we just that ASA just didn't think about that should have been on the list, but it also might be something that's very specific to your community, like um, if you have a uh, let's say you're a middle school and you have a kind of an intro to middle school program in the summer uh, before kids start school, and you want all kids to come to that specific program. Um, so, there, so there may be a choice that's very specific to your school and your community that, that you'll want to add in here. Okay, so then after you've given them some time to think about and to review the work that they did before they got to you, then we're going to say, okay, now let's have a discussion in small groups. So you're putting folks in small groups. They've, everybody's got their little homework paper in front of them that they brought with them. And you're just asking them to have a discussion about what choices are not important for our students to make in, in our school for one reason or another. And then are there any choices that need to be added to the list? Okay, then we're going to come to consensus in a, as a large group in, in a different way than we have in the past. Um, and actually, I forgot a step in here. We, we need, and I'll, I'll put another slide in. We need the small groups to um, talk about what choices needed to be added to the list um, so that everybody can hear that. So I'll put another slide in that will prompt you to do that. Um, okay, so now we're gonna use this tool called an Instagraph. I love Instagraphs, um, they're, they're, they're just cool. So here's how it works. So your Instagraph will look like this. Um, every school's Instagraph is a little bit different because it depends upon which grade levels are in your building. But when you print out the Instagraph, it will have taken all of the survey items and made them into goal statement. So we plan, we, you know, our goal is to increase the percentage of students who plan to continue their education after high school, plan to attend post-secondary ed uh, as a full-time student, plan to submit uh, post-secondary application, use the internet. So we've taken all the survey questions now and we've um, turned them into, um, uh, into uh, goal statements. And now we're just going to say to the council members, look at that list, look at your homework. If there were any of the choices that you did not check because you don't think they're important for our school, we need you to come up and put a little sticky dot next to that um, possible goal that they're suggesting that we not include in our program. So every, I, what I love about this activity is in Instagrams is that everybody gets out of their seat. I like to do it with little sticky dots and um, the sticky dots are colorful and um, so it kind of works like this. First person walks up to this poster, this poster is up on the wall and they say, I don't think it's important for our students to plan to attend post-secondary ed to go to a trusted adult when they have a question about college, and I don't think it's important that they visit the Area Career Center. 
So, um, so they put three sticky dots up here. The next person comes up and they say, you know, I don't think there's anything I would exclude, so I'm not putting any sticky dots up there. Then the next person comes up and they also agree with the first person on these two. So they've put their sticky dot to the right. Next person comes up, next person, next person. And you can see what we're doing is building a bar graph. So this is really a great tool to bring a large group to consensus quickly um, in that, um, you know, now we can go back and we can say, okay, we had consensus that these three items were going to stay in. Nobody thought those should come out. But we had a lot of folks that thought that these were two items that our students didn't need to do. They, they didn't need to make this choice. So let's just talk about these items. And so maybe you have an in-depth discussion about this, or maybe not, because you kind of have you know consensus going in that these things should come out. And then really, what you, the only things you really need to talk about are these things that are kind of the middle of the road. You know, only two people said that they thought this was unimportant. The rest thought it was important. So, you know, how do you resolve that? So this, it, it, this is a great tool for taking a big discussion and narrowing it down very quickly. You know, right off the bat, I know I don't have to discuss the things that got no votes. And I know I probably don't need to discuss the things that got a whole bunch of votes. They're going to come off. It's only the things that maybe have the two votes or three votes that we have to discuss and decide what to do with. So that this is great. Um, if you are a renewal school, you'd also want to um, indicate if this was a current goal here, um, because if we're going to take off a current goal, we just want to make people you know realize, oh, you're taking off a goal that we've had for a while. So um, okay, okay. Uh, Debbie, any questions pop in about the Instagraph? No questions. Okay, okay. Sounds good. So then, and, and then, so at the end of this, you've got your guidance goals. I mean, you know, this, this list um, on the high school list, there's 88 items. I think on the middle school list, there's even more. But when, so when we finish this, you've got a list of all of the choices that you want kids to make. Don't get overwhelmed if that list is 70, 80 items, because remember, we're not going to do them all at once. We just want to get them out on the table. These are the choices that good kids make. And then we're going to just tackle maybe even one of those things to do, or two or three, not more than a handful of them. Also, um, I think you'll find that a lot of those choices um, your kids are already making because you already have a decent school counseling program. So um, yeah, so don't be you know don't be worried if there's a big list here. Okay, so the last thing to discuss is did we find guidance gaps? So you're asking people in their small group now. To, um, to identify, um, you know, as they looked at those drill down reports, um, did they see anything that would make them think that you have guidance gaps, that some students maybe, some groups of students maybe have more opportunities than others or are understanding things in a different way than others, um, than their peers. So remember, everybody has read the drill down report of their choice. So some maybe read the, um, the, um, uh, free reduced lunch drill down, others wrote, read the race and ethnicity drill down, and they'll say, yeah, you know, we saw that our Hispanic students aren't making choices at a rate that's, you know, um, comparable to their peers. And then, you know, maybe the light bulb will go off, oh, well, maybe we should put out our print materials from our guidance, our school counseling program in Spanish um, uh, so that their parents and those kids can better understand, you know, what we're trying to do. So, yeah, so we're looking here for guidance gaps. We will later figure out what to do about them. We're not worried now about what to do about them. We'll, we'll worry about that in a later step. But right now, we just want to identify where those gaps are. So, okay, so that's that. And, um, and then we have an Instagram for that as well. So um, this time, people are going to come up, and the Instagram looks like this. And they'll just put their sticky dots across from um, the uh, student groups where they observed um, in the data guidance gaps. So this time they're putting their dots where they do find um, guidance gaps. So, okay. Um, if you have a lot of people in your council, um, another thing you can do that a little thing that I'll do, I'll say to people, okay, let's, let's bring your dots up, you know, and put them on the chart. 
and then at the same time, let's take a break. So some people will come right to the chart, other people will go off to chit chat or run to the restroom and then they come back and it just kind of staggers everybody going to the charts all at once. Okay, um, last thing is just to give people a heads up on what's coming next. Um, you've already got your goals because we did that with the first Instagraph. You've got your guidance gaps. We did that with the second Instagraph. And then next steps are um, to um, um, let people know that while you have this list of goals, um, you're going to be going to your central office and you should do this um, and asking them to ask them, do they have any goals that they want you to implement district wide? So if your if your um, district is going to you know be engaged in in requiring you to have certain goals across the district, this is the point where we want them to tell you that, and then you can add those into the ones that your uh, council came up with. Um, if all of your schools in your district are participating in RSC, that data can also float up to your where we aggregate the data for all the schools. And that data can float up to your central office people to help them make their decisions. So, okay, so we're giving them their, that heads up. Christy, I see your hand. I'll get you in one second. Um, so the then you're telling your council, okay, our steering team is going to come up with a draft list of goals based on, you know, the Instagram and everything that we talked about today. And those will be our, you know, our RSC goals. And then we'll... Um, you know, we'll feed that back to you for your consensus. And then I would just ask them here, based on what we've done so far and what ended up on that Instagram, can you live with those goals and could you support them publicly? And if they give you a thumbs up, then you know that you're ready to write. If they say no, then you've got to go back and you know, revisit some of that. Okay. And just reminding people what's coming up. You know, at our next meeting, we're going to go back to our list of goals and narrow it down into priority goals. Then we're going to figure out what's getting in the way of the goals, and then we're going to figure out what to do about it, what activities we're going to implement next year um, in our program to address those root causes. Um, and finally, this is really important. Um, we want to tell the council members that that homework that they did before this meeting, they were also going to need for your next meeting. So you want to ask them to please bring their data reviews back with them um, and um, and better yet, if it were me, I would just collect them, have people put their names on them. If you think that make, might make them feel uncomfortable because you know you're looking at their opinions about what they think is important, um, then you can just ask them to bring them back. But I don't think this is really you know sensitive data, so um, I would just collect them. Then you then you know you've got them and not going to have to depend on them to remember to bring them back. So okay, and then that's it. Okay, let's look at questions, and I see a hand up, and I know I can talk to you, Christy, so let's just unmute you. Go ahead. I just have a question. I know um, several years ago when I did this the first time, um, we had to, when we, re when we um, reported our goals in the system, we had to check all if we were striving for gold star. Is that true again this time? Yeah, that is a really good question. Um, no, we we actually changed that, and I think you'll like it a lot better. So for all the other schools that are renewing, if it's been three years since you've been in RSC, that's a great question, Christy. Um, what we're going to do is we're going, we and this has worked a ton better. We've done it for the past two years. We, we're, we'll, we'll just have the schools work through the entire process without any ex, external expectations. So um, the only thing that will be impacting your decisions are your own students' data. Um, then after we get to the step of activities, at that point we'll say, okay, for RAMP or for Gold Star, you have to have activities that, that, that address these things. And um, ideally, you'll already have those activities in and you're not doing them because somebody outside your building told you you have to. You're doing them because your own students' data is, is driving you in that direction. Um, it's a much stronger decision-making process, and, it'll be, and it's much more sustainable. But if there's something that, you know, your kids didn't need, but RAMP is saying you have to have this kind of activity, then, um, then we'll drop that in then. 
And we're not going to have you try to connect that activity with any of your goals or your root causes because really that activity is not connected with any of your goals. You're just doing it. The only reason you're doing it is because Gold Star and Ramp said you had to. So, um, so we're going to connect it at the end and we're going to drop it in at the end and it's not going to be connected with anything because it really isn't connected with anything. Okay, that did that make sense? Sam, thank you. Okay, good, yeah. And it really, that has worked um, just so much better. It really has aligned with our belief that it should, that it's your local student data that drives this process and not anybody outside of your building. Um, yeah, so the, the, the folks outside of your building that might want to drop things in down the road are, you know, DOE and RAMP, and that will come in at the activities step. But we do want to, in this step, determine if there's anybody in central office that's going to tell you, you have, you know, we're going to do this district-wide goal and all the elementary schools are going to work on it next year. So you must drop that into your program. Um, we, we, you know, and we want to know that now because we don't want you to fill your plates and then next summer um, central office says, oh, we have this other thing we want you to do and now you're, now you're beyond your capacity. So we want central office to drop that in now so that to ensure that you're working within capacity. Okay, I'm gonna put you back on mute here. Any other questions? Any questions been typed in? If not, I'll go real quickly and walk through the online system. No other questions. Okay, thanks Debbie. This is, I really enjoy facilitating this meeting. I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, so let's go to the online system and I'm just going to stay in with Perry Meridian since I'm already here. And oops, no, I'm not, that was the report. Okay, let me jump in. Okay, here's Demo School. Okay, so in the process page, so you log in, you're clicked here on process, you came up to this page. I'm going to scroll down to goals. And um, here, you, not much to hand out, cover sheet, agenda for your meeting, uh, the presentation that we just walked through, and then the vision statement. We just gave you a link here in case you want to print it out and, and hand it to your, your council members um, instead of doing it on those slides. Okay, and then behind the scenes, um, the, um, the, um, these things will be a little bit different. Let's see. Yours will start with the steering team slides. So these are going to disappear when we transfer everything over from GAC. The steering team slides are the slides that we looked at a little bit earlier. Plus Delta is, um, is just a kind of a worksheet here. I'll show it to you. It's just kind of a discussion prompt to help you think about your last meeting. And we're looking at, you know, at meeting two, what went well, what do you want to change? Um, that's not a required thing for you to talk about, but um, if, you, you know, we think it's good to have that discussion at least, you know, what went well with your last meeting, just like Christy, you know, had just right now. So that's the plus delta. Um, here's the pre-meeting me memo that we looked at. This is that moving through change document where um, your... Debbie, remind me, or somebody remind me, did we do this in RSC or was this, this just guiding all kids? This was just guiding all kids. Okay, that will come out. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, then the, in its place here will be a link to the Instagram um, that's customized for your school. We'll, we'll get that up. We just finished that a few minutes before the webinar began, so um, we'll get that one up. Then here's the guidance gaps um, uh, in Instagram. And then um, school counseling week is next week, so we wanted to give you some resources. So this document um, includes all of the um, weekly daily announcements for school counseling week that ASK has provided. There's also a poster, and I gave you a little picture of the poster so you can see what it looks like, but here's where you would download it. So if you want to do an announcement and posters up daily, um, we just kind of gave you links for, for that, and that is from, um, that is from ASCA. Then 
but we also gave you, just because I think that they're fun, ideas for how to celebrate. Um, I'm actually going to a meeting tomorrow where I'm going to do the first one, um, where I'm in the process right now of getting lifesavers and putting little notes on them that says, you know, you're a lifesaver for kids, happy National School Counselor Week. But there's all kinds of little kind of ideas that I've collected on the, from the web about things that you could give people um, as a little token of your appreciation and then some cute little um, uh, statement to go with them. So, um, okay. And then the other thing is that um, there is um, a, um, a plan for just a template for planning your what you're going to do in School Counseling Week. In School Counseling Week, a lot of counselors would use it as an opportunity to um, advocate for their program. I know I did that when I was in schools. So, you know, we'd get on the PA in the morning and say, Happy National School Counselor Week. Did you know that? And then we tell them a little bit about school counselors. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, um, to use it to express appreciation for your colleagues. Um, I love it when administrators will, you know, write their counselor a little note or whatever uh, to express their, their appreciation for their counselors during School Counselor Week. So, yeah, so just questions. Um, that uh, or just a template that you can use to kind of think through that and really that's it um so just yeah so it's really it's not a hard meeting to facilitate and you know you end up with like 88 goals but it's very painless um so the thing that i, I really want you to hear me say over and over again is not to worry if you have 88 goals um, we're only going to tackle two or three of them not more than a handful next year and then the year after that, you'll look at maybe a few more. And the year after that, you'll look at a few more. Um, I know in my program, when we did this big transformation in my school, the first year we started with three. And then once we kind of got our feet on the ground, we started adding like seven at a time in. You know, and, you know, 10 years later, we had 70 goals all integrated in a very meaningful way in our program. So, okay. Let's go to questions, and then, then we'll wrap. So, Debbie. Any questions? So far, I don't see any questions, but the PowerPoint that's attached in the handout is not the one they want to use. It will actually be on the manual page, correct? Right, right. The PowerPoint that's in the handout is the one for guiding all kids. Um, it's the one, I think it should be the one that I just walked through, but but you want to use the one that says redesigning school counseling. So that one you're going to get from the, from the manual. Okay. Yeah, and I apologize. We we had um, some unexpected work come up last week, and we just got behind. So, um, yeah, but we'll have that up there um, uh, for when you download tomorrow. That it will everything will be there, and everything will say RSC. I don't see any other questions. Okay, very good, um, Debbie. Anything you want to add before we close? Um, just thanks for all of your hard work. Uh, make sure that you have, you know, as Sue said, make sure you have your student surveys in and the data collected before this next meeting because it's all based on um, that data. Yeah, yeah. So good, thanks. Good, good point. And also, um, not only the surveys need to be done before the next meeting, but you'll need it. You'll want to send that survey, that memo out probably a couple weeks or at least a week before your meeting so that people have time to look at that data before they get to you. So, okay. Yes. Okay. One more thing. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. So the other thing is, um, so I think it's still the case, but they really have to use the tool to send that pre-meeting memo. Is that correct? They can't copy it over. No, no, on this one, it's one of the later emails is like that. You're absolutely right. But this one is a Word document. So um, if they, if, yeah, it actually is a Word doc. It's, it's not generated out, well, it comes out of the system, but it's not an auto generation. So, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. But, but that brings up another point, um, Debbie, is that you, that's why we want to put the the address in here and not just link some words because they're going to need to be able to copy that address. If you copy this into an email, of course, then this can be hot and they can just link right to it. So, um, yeah, up to you. 
Okay. Anything else, Debbie, for the good of the cause? No, I think we're good. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Good luck with your next meeting.